Hey everyone, welcome back to Berlin Noir, and fresh off of episode 30, City Overview, I hope you guys all enjoyed that, and for today we are going to be starting out here on this little portion along the river, which is actually on the bottom right corner of Museum Island, and it was it's basically just a little river port, uh, and as you can see here on the picture, which is on the top left portion of the photo there, just that kind of whited out area, but just a lot of supplies and boats along there, you know, carrying materials or supplies for whatever, I guess the city needed, you know, building, expanding the city, I'm guessing. But uh, I've had this area here sitting untouched for quite a while now. And as you can see, part of it was already planned out, like the uh, size and the just the wall, the river walls. Uh, just in this little corner here, and that's just yeah, like I said, I've had it planned out kind of sitting here for several months now, and uh, I don't know why I just never got around to it um, Yeah, it's just I, I think just cuz there's this slight terrain difference here and I wasn't sure exactly how I wanted to go about you know just making up that little difference in terrain there so, because I don't believe in real life there's any sort of thing like that, or at least anything significant. But uh, I decided just to use these little industrial buildings here, uh, which would be, I guess, more or less the offices or perhaps, you know, a shipping company or something that owns this little river port here. This would be their place of work. And, uh, yeah, it works out because the uh, I lowered or I should say the, middle, the building in the middle uh, has a nice little entrance in the front with a gate and then on the back it has an open just arch area I guess to go to the you know uh, if this I think in real life this building is kind of like a complex it's pretty large so uh, the little arch there would lead to the center of the uh, complex but in this case I put the little staircase there uh, looks good just to make up the terrain difference there and then the two buildings on the sides, uh, I guess the kind of little towers or whatever. Uh, those were nice because there was two options, one for the slightly smaller version and then the one for the slightly larger version, which is the one I used. And it was able, I was able to lower it all the way down to make the uh, ground level of the lower terrain. And yeah, it worked out all right. Plop down, or I used some walls to uh, kind of cover up some of the windows or doors or anything just that were kind of sticking out from you know or as a result of being lowered but uh yeah that works out i you know it's nice uh i i've done that quite a few times in different areas of the city uh because i don't i mean berlin is definitely quite flat compared to you know i guess other european cities or you know what i'm used to living in arizona in the you know west coast of the u.s you know pretty much mountains everywhere you look in this state but uh yeah so it's not to say that berlin is completely flat i mean there's really no place on earth where i mean maybe florida <laughs> that's a pretty flat place but uh you know even though the overall the, the city or the city is very flat there's still of course going to be some terrain differences and for the most part i've kind of just ignored them just because it's easier just to build you know, on level ground, you know, especially in this game, yeah, working with terrain is very difficult. I've mentioned this before, and I always enjoy watching people who are really good uh, working with terrain. And, uh, you know, I, I always, not excluding, you know, what I've done on my YouTube channel, which is before I had a channel and just working by myself, uh, my own cities, I've always avoided really messed up terrains just because it's, it's hard, it's hard to work with. So, yeah, I mean, really, for me, personally, when I did uh, the Mont St. Michel build, that was my first, really, challenge uh, working with terrain. And that was definitely ridiculous terrain, just a tiny little island, which is very steep and definitely very difficult to work with, but very rewarding when you actually, you know, build it out and see how it comes together, because... If, you know, ignoring terrain, as I too often do, definitely lower, uh, it doesn't make it as realistic, uh, you know, in appearance as it, you know, as it could be. So, 
In other places in the city, which are some terrain variation, I definitely want to try more. You know, working with that and not leveling stuff out as much. So again, a Berlin, you know, pretty flat, so it's not going to be too often, which I do have an opportunity. But once I do, you know, in the future, I do kind of want to, you know, use it just to make, make it look a little more realistic. But uh, for this here, I decided just to use these walls here and just to cover up some of the imperfections there with the road there, I used that uh, like utility building or something, maybe for power or water. I don't know what it actually is in real life, but, you know, it is whatever you want to make it in this case. But uh, and to cover up that little portion of the pavement poking out from the road, just plop down some of those timber pieces and then here just decals again to cover up some of those uh, that dark shadow that you get when you put like a network of some kind underneath another network that's elevated uh, that's always a bummer when you uh, get those nasty jagged edge jagged edge shadows and usually you can cover them up pretty well but you know again working with terrain in this game that's one of the issues that is very prevalent and one that makes working with terrain not very fun in this game but yeah so moving on from that we got uh just plopping down some more you know uh, crates in this case just trying to make it look like again like some sort of i guess some kind of shipping company or a transport company i'm not exactly sure what this would have been if it was just if it would maybe have been a bunch of small you know private you know shipping or delivery companies or if this would have been like one large one that kind of owned this entire plot of land um yeah i don't know what would be more likely or anything but uh for my patrons who have yet to choose a location to be named after them this is definitely another location that i'll put on the list of places in which you know we can come up with a name for it named after you so yeah i know there's a few of you left so let me know uh if you're interested in this location to be named after you but uh yeah so also adding a lot of these little boats here um this is a little boat asset pack that's been around for a while now but they, they're nice and compared to the one that i just plopped down there which is like a barge kind of it also gets a really nasty right there that really black i don't know what that is or why it does that but uh, and when you zoom in, it that's what happens. When you're zoomed out, you don't notice it. So I, you know, I'm keeping it and everything. But yeah, these little boats are nice because they actually kind of float around in the water, uh, which is nice, obviously, because it adds some little realism. But occasionally, uh, the you know, the water in this game, you know, for say in a very small river, it looks as though you're out in the open ocean, and the waves are going up and down, and the boats are going up and down. So you know, when that happens, it's kind of annoying. But for the most part, I definitely prefer the, you know, the boats or the props that, you know, move with the water because that's pretty cool. But uh, on this portion of the uh, port, I just decided to make an actual wooden dock that kind of sticks out. Um, uh, just to add something different so it's not just that plain wall all the way around. And then adding these little ramps here in which, you know, people would be pushing, I don't know, their... Uh, carrying supplies or pushing some sort of wheeled, you know, wheelbarrow or something, a uh, dolly of some kind, just, you know, carrying supplies and such. But yeah, I considered putting that all the way around or almost all the way around just to kind of, you know, add a little more to it. But uh, I don't know, I think it looks cool just keeping it separate. And then also directly to the left of that, which is now actually to the right off camera. But uh, and a second ago to the left there was like a little kind of dock area and that's actually a uh, ferry or functions as a ferry dock and uh, I just have these really small boats going around and going up to it taking passengers and hardly anyone uses it but I mean really the only reason I have that is just to have some actual you know traffic in the water actually have a few boats going through underneath the bridges just to add a little life to the you know, the river since, you know, in real life Berlin back then and today, you have those really, really low uh, boats that carry, I guess, mostly today, just passengers for, you know, uh, some sort of tour of the river. But, you know, back then that would, of course, carry you know, a lot of supplies or, you know, carry uh, stuff to be delivered to restaurants or businesses, whatever it may be. 
And there is an asset on the workshop for that, but it's a modern one and it's very obviously modern. So I considered using it, but it definitely would have looked a bit out of place. So I option just to use some tiny, it looks more like a rowboat, but it's, I mean, not, I guess not quite a rowboat. It is a little better than a rowboat, but uh, it's very plain, very simple. So again, I just want to get that, you know, more life added to the river which that kind of brings to it but yeah it's still a little lacking so you know maybe someone will release another type of fairy thing that's small low pro low profile that i can use in the game eventually but uh here i use those decals which i think are actually for like container props like in a port a modern port i should say but uh, just to add some, you know, break up the monotony of the decals there. And I just decided just to put some more of those timber things there, scale them down so they kind of fit in there. Uh, not really sure why I did that. Just to, again, just kind of change it up. Perhaps that wood there is, you know, exp really expensive wood, you know, high quality, something else, not just the typical standard wood that would be used. So, you know, they has to be kept separate, kept separately or something, something along those lines. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. But so this is mostly the end of this part or this part of the build. Uh, we after this, we get to building the Weisenbrucke Bridge, uh, I guess the orphan bridges is in English, as well as the museum there, which is actually the competition which is going right now. Uh, sponsored by Paradox uh, with Emmy Polizai. And uh, yeah, check that out. Uh, it's, I'll put a link in the description in case you aren't aware of it. But it's just a competition uh, which is actually right in this area and to build the bridge in the surrounding area as well. But uh, yeah, it's a tad bit unfortunate what happens in the build. And I guess when we uh, get there, uh, I'll explain more. But as you see, there's really not too much left in this episode so yeah i guess again uh when we get there i will explain but first we have another patron name location in the city and for today we have the new martins markplatz and it is located along the Landwehr Canal in the heart of Berlin and draws in people from the surrounding neighborhoods including Kreuzberg and Schöneberg for the fresh produce, fresh meats, and some of the best sausage the city has to offer. As you can see, there are two large Martins Marktplatz signs that mark the entrance along the street along with a large sign there on that building there including some other advertisements that have been around for some time now and are starting to wear off the side of the building. So congrats to my patron Pablo Martin Casas on your new location here in Berlin named after you. And if there is anyone else who would like to have something in the city named after you as well, then go ahead and check out my Patreon page, link is in the description of the video, and see what there is to offer there on my Patreon. But now we get on to the final part of today's build, and that is this here, the Weisenbrucke, a bridge here that no longer exists. But as you see from this really nice colored photo, it was a really cool area. Uh, you have the city museum there on the right, which is also going to be built in this episode. But uh, this bridge and the area around it is what is the centerpiece of the build competition that uh, Paradox and City Skylines is throwing. And yeah, as I said, so the bridge was uh, destroyed uh, during World War II. It was actually blown up purposely just to prevent the Soviets from basically accessing it and stall the inevitable, you know, their inevitable uh, capture of Berlin. But afterwards, a temporary bridge was built, and it wasn't like temporary as in like really sketchy, barely, you know, staying afloat. It was like a, it was a legitimate bridge that. You know, didn't look too different from the one that actually existed, but that one was actually later torn down in 1960. Uh, I guess it just happened to be the unlucky one there since there was already a few bridges in the area, so they figured that one was no longer needed. But as I said earlier in the episode, that you know there was I guess an unfortunate thing that would happen in this, and that is uh, this is basically all I capture. 
or at least uh, my the uh, build. This is the last of the build that I capture on camera. And I was recording, uh, so this was one day, and the next day I was recording the latter part of the build, which included the museum and the rest of the uh, area. And for whatever reason, my computer just decided not to record uh, when I hit record. Uh, not not sure why or anything, but since I definitely wasn't going to go back and rebuild everything, you know, on camera, it's just going to be an extended period here of cinematic shots of the build and everything and yeah it's unfortunate because it is definitely kind of cool uh i used a good amount of po on the museum there which is a building uh it's a quite a, it's a pretty old one so the textures and they were a little old you know you know people who have been making assets for the game have definitely been improving over time but it, one nice thing since it was an old asset and it wasn't so detailed i was able to Manipulate it in ways that I can't really m m Newer buildings that have a ton of vertices when I use POs like, you know If you convert a building to PO and you go to customize it, you know, you have a bunch of little blue dots to edit all the vertices and it, For this particular building given its size and everything there was very 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 few so I was able to move things around a bit uh, move slant walls that weren't completely slanted since this uh, corner here is not 90 degrees So that was cool and I also added that other wing there, just lowered it down a bit, added those arches so it looked like, you know, actual entrances and everything. But uh, I think it turned out alright. I wanted to, like, definitely capture that large clock tower-like structure there on the museum since that's definitely the first thing that I noticed when looking at pictures of this area and probably the first thing you noticed as well. But, yeah, so that's going to be it for that area there. And unfortunately, I know, as I said, you know, it's a big bummer that I wasn't able to capture it. But the remaining part of the episode here is just going to be the cinematics of what we built here of uh, the river port here. But so I hope you guys enjoyed this episode nonetheless, you know, even though we uh, missed out on the time lapse build of the, you know, I would say the cooler part of the episode. But, uh, you know, hopefully on my end, uh, it doesn't happen again. Uh, the G-Force experience, not to, deciding not to record uh, my time-lapse footage in-game. But uh, yeah, I guess I'm just going to leave you with a couple more uh, cinematics, and I will see you all in another episode. See you then.